gonna do a new video today. I know it's been a while, um, so I hope you'll enjoy this one. So today I'm not gonna really do a tutorial. Well, I'm actually gonna do like some. Um, I'm gonna give away a free script, uh, an AI script. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm working on a new game, uh, which you can see in the background here, and uh, well. For that game, I was looking for a good AI script online, and I couldn't really find anything, so I wrote my own, and yeah, I would just like to share it with you guys. Now, I could do a tutorial on how to write this, like write it line by line uh, and capture it on the screen, but you know, I don't really think you would learn a lot from that. It's a pretty long script, and I don't really want to write it again. So what I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna upload it and I'm, I'll post a link to the download in the description. Um, yeah, what I'm I'm gonna do this video is I'm just going to explain to you how the script works. So first off, I've def I've called it AI Mob. That's a class name, and then there is a whole bunch of variables. And I'm not gonna explain one by one. I'm not gonna explain these one by one. Um, I'll just explain them when I get to them in the code. So first we have our start function, it's going to do some basic stuff. It's going to look for the charger controller, so make sure you have that. It's going to look for the animation component to play the animations. Um, I'll make sure you have that as well. Um, then it's also going to, then it's going to start a, uh, a coroutine. And what this basically does is this is good for performance. So this will run at about um, 30, 40 frames per second. You can set the time between frames here. I've set it to 0 0.04, which is about 25 frames per second. Yeah, 25 frames per second. Um, so yeah. Um, so this is like the basic start, this is like your update function, this is what your update function would be, only if it's running at a way lower uh, update frequency. Well, you, you will notice some lag, so you might want to turn this up, I just turned it this low because I just did a performance test and I wanted to see like how how far I could push it. This is like the minimum, this is like the absolute minimum. I would turn it up a little bit, well I would make it a little bit lower because then the frame rates would be a little bit higher, but this is like absolutely bare minimum. Um, so yeah, then it will have two states, it will either be hunting for a target or it will be patrolling. Now uh, the patrolling sexy has a little bit of work in progress, uh, for now when it's patrolling it's just standing still and uh, looking for targets, but I'm gonna, what I'm, I'll am i post update to that in the future so that it will uh, actually walk around and search actively for someone. Um, then uh, here, it will see if the character is moving uh, or not, and it will do that just by comparing the position from this frame to the position of the last frame. And it will, if it's like within reasonable amount, then it will uh, say it stands. If the it's this, if the position is the same in a reasonable amount, like some very small difference, and it will say it's standing still, and it will play the uh, idle animation and also will be playing the walk animation. So here you have it, it's the patrol function. What it will basically do is it will always, when it's patrolling, make sure the target is zero and then it will look for a target. Now the look for a target function is a little bit down below here. And as you can see it's not the avoid but a transform. So what it basically will do is our target is equal to the outcome of this function. So what does this mean? Um, you will actually have to return a value in this function, and I really like to use these kind of things for uh, things like that, like searching for targets or like finding things, uh, seeing if you can, checking if you can do something. I really, yeah, you can see this here, but I'll explain that later. So what is it gonna do? So this is this script works in multiplayer, by the way. Well, it uh, what I mean by that is work in multiplayer. It works when you have multiple players not necessarily multiplayer because it won't update the uh, targets over network yet but I'll, I can like teach you that if you if, if there is an interest for that so yeah we'll make a list of all the targets 
uh, and then it will go each target one by one and see if the distance is within its attack or its chase range. This is at the, not the attack range, but the uh, range at which it will start chasing you. Now, if it is within this range, then it will uh, s check if it can see you. Now, how do, will it do that? It will uh, cast a ray cast, and if it hits you, then it means it will be able to see you. So you have to set the mask, that's a, like a variable, right here, uh, right here. You have to set this mask to the layer of your AI. Um, so yeah, else it will just, you know, if, if you don't do that, it will just like see everything and it will keep hunting, you know, and it will hunt you even if it can see you, which is not, no, or not. So if that's true, if it has found the target, it will start hunting. Uh, what does this mean? It will go to attack player and here it will save the location of the target as the last visible position. So when it gets into this function it will see the target and it will store that as the last visual position. It will check again if it's uh, able to see you and if it's able to attack you. Now this is default set by true but I put this variable in for uh, flexibility in the other scripts, but I'll talk about that a little later. It will also see to make sure, you know, do we have a target? And also, it will return this is a little bit useless. You can do that, you can remove that. Same goes for this, but I just like to put it in there. I probably rem will remove it later uh, for performance reasons, even though this will not really make that big of a difference. Um, it will also check again if it's within distance because once the uh, this function starts it won't keep checking distances with the look for target function so you have to like do that manually again here um, it will again set the position to the uh, last visible player position this is actually completely useless we can do that away we can remove that uh, probably just mistaken yeah probably mistaken there um, and now what will it do it will see check if the distance is far is larger than the don't come closer range so if you like obviously you don't want your AI to like run into you so that's why I've put this variable here then it will move towards you and it will start moving towards you and if it's not it will just keep rotating towards you but uh, don't mistake this, it will, even if the distance is larger, it will still rotate towards you um, because it will, be, it will get called in the uh, move towards function again. So you don't, you don't need to worry about that, that's, uh, that's taken care of. Um, then another thing, wait, wait a second, okay. So, now it will basically determine this will basically determine the direction um, in which you need to walk. Uh, this is this will make sure that you won't try to go up in the air. Uh, this doesn't really matter. This is your angle. So if you're above, like say in an, uh, because the distance function doesn't uh, count in uh, altitude. So if you're, for example, somewhere in our story and the AI is below you, then this will make sure it won't be able to attack you from that angle. So if all these things, if the distance is within the hit distance and the angle is within the uh, attack angle, it will attack you. Else, um, it, will, it will look for you. It will look for you in the last visible position. So let's say you duck behind cover, the AI won't stop looking for you, it will go to the position where it saw you last and see if it can find you right there. You see that's this function here. And if this function is uh, unsuccessful, you see it will look for you for 10 seconds, then it will return to uh, patrolling. If it did see you, then it will attack you 
and uh, I have to add some audio in here. Uh, I believe I just commented it out, but you can you can do that yourself. Yeah, it, I commented it out here. But uh, yeah, you can just do it yourself. You can uh, add that in. I will do that later because right now there is no audio, and I would like some audio. I also didn't have a I idle audio sound yet, but I'll put that in later as well. And then th these two functions are basically this will rotate the uh, AI towards you, and this will move the AI towards you. And this is just a simple function that this will just will get played at the start to make sure it uh, goes, it uses gravity because this function will only get called when there is a target and this is the function that makes sure your tar your AI has gravity so when you would instantiate it, it wouldn't necessarily be on the ground because this is very good for performance, this will only be called when there is a new position to move through and that's very good for performance um, alright, there's one more thing I have this uh, get shot function and you will need to call this manually from your damage script and what this will basically do is when you get shot or something or anything the attack range is, is triples um, yeah just the attack range will triple um, then one last thing um, if you this is like your basic follow attack and AI, this won't do anything crazy. If you want to like have different types of enemies, like for example I want to have a troll as well, then you can do like this call, thing called uh, multi-scripting or, or that's, what, that's what I call it, it probably has like a, a good name, name, but what you will basically do is take this script and everything that's in this script will automatically be in this script, but you don't necessarily have to type everything again. This is something very useful and you can add like your own changes to it. So how does this work? You basically just take the class name of the script and put it where mono behavior should be. And then you give this script another class name. So for example, I call this AI troll. And now uh, you should look it up at the Unity website. They have some tutorials about that. Um, so yeah, basically what works is you take a function, you make it virtual and then if every function is virtual you can override and if you want to call the base function you need to do that you need to do that manually but if not you can just completely override it so that it's completely new and uh, you can see I have put some uh, put some of my own code in okay I put some new code in there and now the troll will behave a little bit differently for example this well, actually, what the script just d does is it will give a special attack when it gets hit a, num a certain number of times. It will start to st uh, it will start yelling, and uh, after a while of yelling, it will hit the ground, damaging all enemies that are in a close proximity. Um, and this, you know, this will give like some some gameplay. Uh, the script is not done yet. But I'll put it in anyway, just like as a, more as an example of a multi-scripting. But don't expect this to do like anything yet, because it doesn't work, doesn't really work yet. Um, but this this one does. This one works uh, actually pretty fine. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked it. I will upload everything uh, later today, and uh, yeah.